listening to Your Music, Your Way. Uh, this is a powerful path of improvisation for accessing innate genius and liberating your essential gifts. Um, and I'm really excited about offering this series of conversations for the world and uh, for each other so that we can uh, explore more about the various ways that uh, the innate gifts that we have um, are, are a genuine offering in the world. And in particular with this summit, how music and sound and uh, using that in combination with, with improvisation, with, with um, listening and feeling uh, and playing in such a way that we, we, we bring these um, different aspects of reality together uh, into a conscious tool that we can use to navigate the unknown. Um, you know, as we know, the unknown is all around us and all within us these days. There's a whole lot of unknowns. And to me, the, the probably the most essential skill that any of us could possibly learn at this point in time is to navigate the unknown um, with mastery. And so this summit is about um, bringing different people together. I'm going to have about 25 or 30 uh, people who come from the fields of sound healing, uh, personal development, spiritual development. Um, uh, musicians, um, uh, energy healers, uh, some really amazing people to um, bring their perspective on this topic of how to live creatively and how to use uh, our voices and sound uh, in a way that moves the direction in the world that we most want to take it uh, in a co-creative kind of a way. So, um, so that's what this is about and I really appreciate you being here. Um, today, I'm delighted to welcome my old friend, Cater Brown, uh, who has played a huge role in my life for about the last 18 years or so. Um, I could go on and on and on about stories uh, with about Cater, um, but it, it's a real, uh, you know, open your heart to this, to this moment today because uh, Cater is truly one of the treasures in my life. Um, he is internationally renowned as a ceremonialist and uh, cowrie shell diviner. Uh, healer, intuitive, teacher, shaman. Um, he has uh, created ways of uh, integrating Western uh, psychotherapy along with many other uh, modalities. Um, Hakomi, uh, he has um, studied in depth uh, African uh, spiritual traditions, um, Native American spiritual traditions, Celtic, Celtic uh, tradition, um, and has gone, has taken it really deep in his own life and has really helped other people uh, to go deep in theirs, including mine, and I am deeply grateful to this man, uh, and super excited to uh, to engage in this conversation with him. Um, um, I will I will just read a little bit about what Maladoma Somme has to say about Cater. Uh, Maladoma says, "I have known Cater for a long time as a man of spirit with remarkable devotion to healing. He tends to his duty to this duty with royalty and ferocious commitment." As a man who hears the call of earth and nature, Cater extends his hand to those in quest of change and transformation, and is always willing to lead them into and guide them through a deep sense of communion with themselves. Having worked with him in a number of rituals and ceremonies and watched carefully the way he gives of himself to spirit, I have come to respect his priestly devotion to the sacred in nature and in every human. His work deserves respect and reverence. Uh, so with that, um, uh, Cater's uh, going to be with us and talking today about tracking the footprints and heartbeats of your soul's calling into a life of memory and belonging through ceremony and ritual. So uh, Cater, thanks so much for, for being with us today. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this, this conversation with you online. <laughs> that we'll be going out to a whole bunch of people. <laughs> We've had uh, lots of private day. conversations over the years, but this one's going out there. So that's really yes. super cool. No telling what kind of trouble we'll get into. There's no telling at this point. <laughs> Hopefully the good kind. So yeah, <laughs> great. Good morning. It's great to be here. And thank you for the invitation to join you in this summit. It's exciting. Oh my God. You're not going to believe this, dude. Oh, okay. It is in progress. Okay. <laughs> I thought it wasn't recording. Okay. Um, recording. All right. You know, the only way we're going to get back through that little oh my God thing was, um, was I think we might have to edit that, but um, I, I just wanted to make sure that it was recording. I was not sure if I was, or maybe we'll just leave it like that. Maybe that's just kind of like <laughs> what just happened. It's like, oh, Daniel's doing his first summit and he doesn't know what he's doing. 
So like, I guess that's a perfect introduction to the conversation. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry, I, I interrupted. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Daniel. It's great to be here this morning. <laughs> Excited to see what we get into. <laughs> Well, uh, um, so I guess I guess uh, I'd like to start by by asking you uh, what is the um, what is the thing that that drew you into this work in your life to listen to the call of spirit and to respond to the call of spirit? What what what's your earliest memory of of that um, kind of inkling and awareness? Oh gosh, the earliest memory. Let's see. I would say um, following the death of my father, uh, what got activated and started to wake up in me was the memory of uh, being around the age of 14. And so my father died when I was 32. And when I say what what got activated and woke up was this memory of this desire to go out into nature under the guidance of an elder and spend time there in nature, like deeply listening and, and uh, connecting with and learning from and being mentored by nature. Um, so maybe the first time was around 14 and I didn't know what it was called. Uh, nobody in my world was uh, attuned to that kind of information. Um, so it really went underground and then at my father's death, resurfaced. And so at that time, um, I was working as a psychotherapist. Um, and I would, on my way to my office, I'd drive by sections of forest and, and um, still processing his death, just felt this, this calling, this, this longing uh, to just stop my car and get out and go out, out into the woods and disappear. And the way I say it now, it's like disappear until um, I remembered my song or my name. Um, and so I think there's something, uh, I've come to believe there's something innate in our, in our bone memory and our in ancestral wisdom and bone memory that starts to get activated, that, that turns us toward uh, with a listening ear that we call the calling um, of uh, realigning ourselves uh, to uh, uh, a purpose and an intent um, that's been there all along. That's more about who we are. So in the world of rites of passage and initiations, what's interesting, this thing called a calling song, since it's about music and song, that this alignment with a, a calling song uh, guides us forward. Um, and these kind of initiatory songs that, that we call calling songs, are, are like, um, I think of them like in the Aboriginal context of song lines that one follows across the landscape that guides them somewhere. Um, so these songs are like roadmaps. Um, and they literally can be songs mm -hmm. um, that we hear uh, tonal sounds or frequencies that, that might come to us that we begin to follow. Um, as a roadmap that's guiding us deeper into our, our pur purpose and passion in life. Mm. Uh, so mm. the beginning, I would say, was 14, and that, that reactivation that happened when I was older, around 32, with, with the passing of my father and, and the waking up of this, this calling. Mm. Mm. Nice. nice. And longing. I, th I think calling and longing are very similar. If something uh, pulls you forward, um, into a uh, into a memory that lies in front of you um, of a of a story that you're living into a song that is your song uh, to be sung to the world if we frame it that way mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so that's that's how it it's uh, a little bit of the nutshell of how it I got woke up in me and got activated <laughs> yeah yeah nice 
Um, and as you as you speak, I was I was noticing two or three things in me around um, you know the power of music. You mentioned that it sometimes it's an actual song, and it reminded me of how powerful songs are in our lives. You know, when you hear some song that you haven't heard since you were 14, mm-hmm. it takes you right back there. You're with that same partner or whatever, you know, and and uh, uh, and we and you know all these stories about um, people with Alzheimer's these days who kind of wake up when they hear songs from their childhood or from their earlier life. Mm-hmm. Um, that it it literally has those songs do literally have power to enliven and mm-hmm. pull us together and bring us together and remind us of things that we've forgotten and, mm-hmm. and so many different things. Um, and the other thing that I noticed was that you said um, that it connects to longing, it connects to our longing. So this this uh, you know that you hear something and then it connects to something inside inside of us um, and it might be it might be a longing it's some sort of a feeling it's some sort of a something that's happening in the body uh, can you talk about that a little bit yeah the the longing what I said if we think of memory as not simply being a linear experience that happens somewhere behind us but that memory is a fluid experience that is all around us and so to remember something we can literally remember something in front of us, something we're yet, we've yet to live into. And so this uh, a song, if we're talking a literal song or frequency of sound, um, can register something in us that sparks a, a longing, uh, a knowing, like to, want to, say, to say you know something in your bones, like you don't know where, where it came from. Um, but, it, but it then serves as a... Um, a lighthouse, a roadmap that calls us into uh, a more authentic life. Um, songs can be, so we hear the frequency of sound and song and it, and it, it, open, it can open something up that uh, got closed. Um, I'm remembering now some years ago, um, I was doing a, a, leading a workshop at the Finhorn community in Scotland and my co uh, my co guy my co facilitator in that uh, experience uh, was a lady by the name of Mari Campbell. She was uh, for many years running the the number one instrumentalist and uh, singer songwriter in Scotland. And she and I were doing this workshop together, and we were doing this piece piece of ritual work with this uh, this woman. And I'm uh, tracking and listening, watching the woman, and, and Mari sitting on the other side of the lady, and she's sitting between us. Um, and I hear this uh, bird sound, and it's a particular frequency. So when we talk about the original songs, we're, we're talking about animals and wind and rain. So I heard this this bird sound out, out the window, and I watched it touch uh, the woman's heart and I saw this like softening opening starting to happen. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm thinking, I bet Mari can duplicate that sound with her voice. (laughs) And so I lean over to tell her to kind of cue her to, you know, the bird, do that. Mm -hmm. Amplify that. And as I lean over to cue her, I find out that Mari is the one making the bird sound. <laughs> and so we're like, we're, we, we think of it, okay. And then before long, the work involves and emotions in this woman begin to flow. And then as it all starts to come out, it, it moves into a dance. And it was very beautiful, cathartic release of this unresolved grief. Um, that's but great. it's just the way that, that song has always been um, uh, 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 connected with ritual, connected with ceremony. It holds it together. Um, it, it's what, uh, without the song, it's like the, the, the container of the, the ceremony, the ritual may, may fall, fall apart. Mm-hmm. And yet, so song and sound become this, uh, way of holding the sacred space, mm-hmm. um, and then there's song that uh, that when we talk about listening, uh, that we think of the song of the landscape. You know, that that to be in nature and listen deeply uh, to the sound of of a uh, a flowing river. I've sat for uh, in in on quest 
been out in nature, as I know you have, when you sit for literally for days and listen and listen deeply. And um, I was on a quest one time uh, some years back, and I was down in this this ravine, and there's a small creek that flowed through there. And it was about I was about into the third day of uh, the quest, and um, had been fasting and one thunderstorm after another it was that kind of a quest just lightning and thunder it's, it's like one after another for days i, lo I love this story yes i love <laughs> you this remember story. this one yes oh yeah and, <laughs> you know, what happened to me is uh, I, I had my prayer was for stillness and so i'd chosen a really small tarp for this quest and so i had sat like hunched on that tarp in rain you know it's like maybe four by six and so I sat for days on my backpack on that under that tarp and and so the song we could say the song of the lightning the thunder the rain began to activate unresolved emotions in me and I felt this tremendous uh, anger uh, which we can also think of anger as petrified grief but it often comes in the form as anger first so the the song of nature started to activate this anger. And finally, I, I came out of the tarp in the middle of this lightning storm and started, you know, yelling and screaming and throwing rocks and releasing all this energy and, and uh, symbolically stomping upstream against the current. <laughs> um, and then when I had released all that, I just found myself turned to move with the water and then the grief came. And then I found myself sitting on this rock and the sun came through the trees and landed just on me. And I'm sitting there and I feel this utter quiet. And then I hear uh, a violin. And then I hear what I think is a mandolin. Um, and I hear these instruments starting to play. And it's so clear that I look around um, and even give up my spot and go looking for this. Now I'm literally. Oh, 50 or 75 miles away from anybody. I'm deep in the woods. <laughs> um, but I'm hearing a song. And as I hear this song, it activates this even deeper grief of longing, a sense of coming home. Um, and, I'm, and, and I'm looking for where's this coming from? And I can't, it sounds like it's coming from the water. And I follow the water and the water takes me to an old, uh, abandoned homestead that I can only see the remnants of the foundation and what was left maybe 100 or uh, 200 years ago um, and so it's it's uh, where did that song come from you know is is less of an important question um, but what the song activated in me and how it found me you know in that forest um, and how it helped me heal. So songs uh, like that, like like Maury singing the bird song and open this woman's heart and the song that came from somewhere, maybe another time and place, um, but came to me and opened up my heart. So songs in, in the use of healing and ritual, um, connected with story, connected with healing. Um, and mm -hmm. this, Yeah. So, so much there. Right, right. I gotta. I have. I have to make a confession because I realized uh, when you were when you were. I, I realized I had not heard that story, oh. or at least I don't remember it. Um, I thought you were gonna tell another story about having to clamber across a river in the in the in the rain, and you had you know you had to get some help, and you had to find some humility because you had to get some help from somebody else to get you across the river because you couldn't leap across it like you could when you were 30. Well, there was that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Another I thought you were story. going to say. That's a, that's a story of humility and, and yeah. getting <laughs> But, uh, but, uh, I, uh, but uh, something else I wanted to acknowledge was the, the, the interesting thing about how that song, like you say, it came from, it came through Mari. Um, mm -hmm. But it was it which it came. I imagine it came through her own connection to the original song. Mm -hmm. Like you say, it might have come from another time or place. But but in some way or other, you were hearing it as the original song. Mm -hmm. And so if it is the original song, if it's coming from that place, which I imagine it that I would I bet if we asked her, you know, she'd say something like that. 
Um, and he, he actually does have a way of saying that. Like, and 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 I always find myself uh, as a ceremonialist working with people that uh, are the song carriers. Like you and I do a lot of work together, and you you hold that corner of the ritual with the song and the and the, the sound. And and um and Mari has a way of like with music. She'll say there's there's a frequency that that she calls the ho home. And so somebody holds the home frequency and people can travel out from that place and come back to home. Um, so her way of kind of speaking to that note and that everybody has a, a frequency of sound, their song that is that is their home. Hmm. And when you find that it, it it's a it's a way of connecting deeply um, to the source of you know who they are um, mm -hmm. and all that they're connected to. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I loved it when I heard that. I was like, oh, that, I like the way that that, uh, that acknowledgement of, of home and looking for home and finding home through sound and frequency. That's really interesting because a lot of times what I will do when I'm, you know, the approach that I will take, <clears throat> as you know, is is um, uh, and, and kind of part of what we do is we'll follow whatever somebody's experience is in a moment. You know, like if somebody's starting to, uh, go into grief or whatever, you know, we'll take that energy so that it's sort of the home, it's sort of a home for where they are right now, I guess. Um, and um, um, it's, it's support. It's all about, you know, here's your, you know, it's okay for you to feel this way kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and you're surrounded, you're not alone, you know, there is, yeah. you know, we see you mm -hmm. uh, and we're with you uh, kind of, kind of approach. And so maybe that's just another way of of thinking of it as as home, you know, you are home. Yeah, regardless of what you're home, right belonging, now. sense of uh, um, when when you said the title of the, this particular talk, I hadn't thought of about it since I sent it to you some time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something about uh, memory and belonging. Um, but there's this. Um, yeah, track, the you want to read it to you again, real quick? Just, okay. Uh, that doesn't matter. I, I can track it. I'll, I'll just read it real quick. Tracking the footprints and heartbeats of your soul's calling into a life of memory and belonging through ceremony and ritual. So yeah, tracking the footprints and heartbeats of your soul's calling. Yeah. yeah so again, it's, it's, uh, it's that tracking, that following, that um, footprints and heartbeats um, is both. Uh, when you're tracking footprints and heartbeats, you're following something ancient, something that's been left in the ground before you uh, by the ancestors, the human and the non-human. So you're tracking these footprints and heartbeats, these sounds and symbols uh, um, into a life of memory and belonging. And that's at home place. Uh, memory and, and belonging is about the connection to, uh, you know, with rites of passage, there's this deep connection and resonance with nature. Um, they'll tell people they'll start to, their own frequency of energy will start to vibrate with the frequency of nature around them, um, as opposed to where they were in the cities or the, uh, the places they came from before they were in nature long enough. Mm -hmm. um, and so this uh, this way of following, tracking, going towards belonging, um, I think it's uh, something that most, well, I would say everyone is is in search for and looking for is this place of belonging. Mm -hmm. um, and the memory associated with belonging is that it's it's not something you find, it is something you remember. It's like, oh yeah, I know this place. Um, and, and it's that, a word, that word. That word place. I'm sorry to step in right there, but that that word place just seems so rich. Um, you know, Plotkin talking about our 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 path is to to find our place in the world, mm -hmm. and and so often it's it it has seemed to me, and I think you know I'm not alone in this uh, either. Is that we think that. We think in terms of a literal place or a literal job or a literal relationship or a literal, you know, situation, literal circumstances that's like, oh, these are my people or this is my, you know, this is my role or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm hearing you say is that it's a it's a remembering of something that's in here mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. that I can become, that I can live, that I can, that I can live wherever, whatever's going on around me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah. and that that's my place. That place. And, you, you know, when we think about songs and songs we mm-hmm. like, they carry us to that place. You know, we have a particular uh, musician or artist or singer songwriter or just songs in general that we really gravitate towards and like is because they mirror something to us about uh, a part of ourselves that we're uh, longing to connect more deeply with. Um, And so the, uh, you know, I think of the original source of, uh, of, of healing was stories, but the original source of stories was sound um, from the landscape um, that we began to uh, hear and and and, and, uh, and duplicate and imitate and and replicate and then put our own spin on it. Um, but the 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 song of the earth, you know, is is some, in some context we'll hear that uh, mm. listening to the song of the earth. What does that really mean? Um, has this nice sound to it. <laughs> uh-huh. What does it mean to listen to the song of the earth? It's like, well, to be in be in nature long enough so all of your uh, inner dialogue and inner disturbance of distraction uh, begins to quiet. Hmm. Uh, and as that quiets, um, what rises up first are all of the things that we have pushed down. Um, and, and it may come in the form of information or emotion um, or sound, song. Um, but yet what's on the other side of that uh, release is this stillness, this, this place of mindfulness and listening, um, the place our thoughts don't go because we're so engaged with our experience. Um, and so the one place I have a, a, a friend in recovery that likes to say, you know, your your mind can be like a bad neighborhood and you don't really want to go there by yourself sometimes. <laughs> it's not a safe place to go on your own. <laughs> not a safe place to go by yourself. <laughs> um, and yet when you're out on quest, when you're in, in nature, when you're, you know, when you're in these experiences, you end up there. Um, but the illusion is you're by yourself when you're not. You're you're surrounded by, you know, the nature and and the yeah. beings of nature and the animals and the river and the mountains and the stones and the trees and um, so and many allies. So yeah, many allies. What begins to happen is is all this uh, um, repressed distraction begins to move out in some form. And what's on the other side of that, this release, is this stillness, is this awareness. Um, so that if somebody came to you and said, hey, what are you thinking? You might say, well, I'm, I'm not really, actually, I'm not thinking anything. I'm really enjoying the awareness of, of what's here. And what I can hear and, and what I can see is all, all of a sudden heightened. Um, so it's what enabled me after that release of the anger and the grief, you know, in my quest, that one quest I was on, uh, was that somehow I tuned a de- another level of listening and seeing that gave me access to something greater than me that mm-hmm. carried me home. This song, this this mandolin, this this violin, these instruments that seemingly showed up in the woods from and I um, could only track them partially to the stream and then following that to an old homestead um, and and all is left left with was you know I, t- I can't explain where this music came from but I know what happened when I heard it mm. and that's what was important yeah um, beautiful it, yeah. it uh it reminds me of of the um you know you've so beautifully um um laid that out this whole um the power of of and sometimes the difficulty the extreme difficulty of letting go of some of these of of these repressed Mm -hmm. um energies or or beliefs or um you know griefs um angers um Mm -hmm. frustrations uh, stories Uh, and i have found in the work that i do with 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 my folks is that the hardest thing 
you know, there's so many people out there that say, oh, well, I'm not a musician or I'm, you know, I don't have a musical bone in my body or whatever and, and sit down at the piano and so often will start playing what they think is music. It's so funny. You know, I have a couple of clients who will, you know, when, when they will sit down, it, the stuff that they play just immediately sounds like Bach. You know, it just sounds like it's like this, these things that they learned as, you know, it's like this is what music is supposed to sound like. And uh, and the hard and the hardest thing is to get folks back to the point of just I don't have a, um, a piano here I can play but just to play a sound, and listen to it, and just mm -hmm. allow it to be, mm -hmm. um, and then play another sound and listen to that, uh, and allow that to be and listen to it and then go oh well, let's see what might I want to play next and just to get to that slowing down, mm -hmm. more of the pace of nature kind of thing you know mm -hmm. our own nature. Mm -hmm. which isn't you know our nature isn't to be like doing this all the time <laughs> right and you know so bringing it in it's like our nature literally our nature is to you know is to relax and notice and look around and go oh look at that look at that tree or look at that you know beautiful painting or something yeah and that's that's this um but the ability to do that to, to be able to still the mind to still the uh the tension in the body um to uh to to really be able to listen um requires more than just learning music or song it requires a, a deeper deeper relationship to oneself and and to one's present moment um and if one can get there the the song the sound uh fi finds them um you know part of in rites of passage and going on uh, vision quest or vision fast, this this idea of uh, when one is questing, um, they are often gifted a song, um, and this is the song um, uh, we get called a medicine song, a, a calling song, um, but a song um, that is personal to them uh, in, in tone and quality maybe in in some uh words but maybe it doesn't have lyrics maybe it's just a tonal mm -hmm. it's their uh, song their song their frequency their sound um comes to them and that's a big part of the uh what one is looking to connect with and and so this this ancient understanding that we're we're looking for our song we're looking for our sound and and finding that uh requires you know this this stillness, this uh, to be present with ourselves and our immediate uh, surroundings in a um, in a very deep way um, allows that to to allows us to hear it and mm -hmm. allows it to find us. We, it's like we make ourselves available to be found by the song that's been looking for us uh, as we've been looking for it. Mm. Um, and so, so much of uh, the quest in nature is is uh, to prepare yourself through ritual and ceremony so that the song you've been looking for uh, can also find you. Finds you. And um, mm. reminds me. I love that. I'm getting chills just hearing. I've heard you, you know, it's like, uh, and and I'm just getting chills hearing that. The sense of it's a it's a two-way street, you know. It's longing for, for us as much as we're longing for, for it. Mm -hmm. And it's a right it, it's a it's a much more um soul centric perspective than egocentric because say soul centric or e ecocentric perspective that uh it's not just about us that there's a frequency of song and sound um that is looking for us mm -hmm. um that we uh, our job is to make ourselves ready for it um it's like when people go on uh, quest with me not everybody will have um what we could call a soul encounter or a deeply soulful experience um i'd say the majority of people don't um but to make yourself ready for it is the most you can do mm -hmm. and, and that's the the emptying out um the the opening up what i call open palms and empty heart um to prepare oneself to open up to something greater than yourself um to, to let the words i don't know be a doorway 
um, to, to have, you know, I'm, 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 I'm looking and I don't know where to look anymore. I mean, it's like this, uh, this, now they're ready. Now something can come in. Now their cup's not too full. Mm. Um, I want to share a, a, a Wendell a Berry poem with you um, that really speaks to this experience um, on the quest. That's called I Go Among Trees. Because I go among trees and sit still, and all of my stirring becomes quiet around me like circles on water. All of my stirring becomes quiet around me like circles on water. My tasks lie in their places where I left them, asleep mm -hmm. like cattle. Then what is afraid of me comes and lives for a while in my sight. What it fears in me leaves me, and the fear of me leaves it. It sings, and I hear its song. Then what I am afraid of comes. I live for a while in its sight, and what I fear in it leaves it, and the fear of it leaves me. It sings, and I hear its song. After days of labor, mute in my consternations, I hear my song at last, and I sing it. And as we sing, the day turns and the trees move. Mm -hmm. After days of labor, mute in my consternations, I hear my song at last, and I sing it. And as we sing, the day turns, the trees move. The poem by Wendell Berry called "I Go Among Trees." Mm, that's powerful, Cater. You know, I'm 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 reflecting on so many different things that are happening in in my life, uh, kind of that may not be um, directly applicable in a lot of other people's lives, but there are also a lot of things that are happening in all of our lives right now that we're all aware of, and. Um, and that just seems like such deep wisdom to um, bring into our hearts right now. Um, you know, I I, um, I have become concerned about this the the you know the very state of democracy, and so mm -hmm. you know there's there's that fear in me about you know will we be you know what is our future um, and, and not just the United States but around the world. You know, I mean autocracies are taking over around the world. Mm -hmm. And so there's deep fear in me yeah. uh, around some of that stuff. And I have also faith that we're not alone, that there's, mm -hmm. you know, that the ancestors, that there are other things going on that, you know, we humans are not aware of mm -hmm. and that they are our allies. And that if we, you know, as we learn to come together and to step forward into, I don't know this instead mm -hmm. of like some sort of, you know, like acting from our fear and, you know, being reactive mm -hmm. from fear place but coming together and realizing that we're we are together in this we're all in this together um and how can we step in with i don't know leading with i don't know mm -hmm. and to navigate that territory navigate that path in a way that we can you know learn to trust something in the midst of being surrounded in unknown <laughs> You know, yeah. how can we navigate in such a way that we can bring the love that, mm -hmm. we, that we want? Right. The, 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 sur the surrendering, not giving up, that's very different. But this opening to the, the I don't know, you know, and to be met by the unknowable. This is the, the, the crux of the awakening to one song um, that we are... Uh, commissioned by our very life to sing by the way we live our lives. Um, and so when we think about this, these times of global cha uh, challenge and, and change, um, you know, begin here. Um, what, is, what is it that I can bring uh, to this um, that's going to, you know, like a pebble dropping in a, in a pond, it's going to ripple out and I won't see where all these ripples go. Um, but what what is it that I that I came here to bring uh, to this time in this situation? 
no matter what happens. Um, and am I am I singing my song, uh, or have I simply just picked up somebody else's song and confused it as my own? Mm -hmm. um, and this is uh, this is an important uh, question to to ask ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of that thing you said about when when Mari, you know, sang the the bird. You know, mm -hmm. if we it, it what struck me about that was that when when each of us, when she in that instance went deeply enough, connected to the song that is underneath it all, that's the original, that's the that's common, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we sing that, and she brought it through her voice. And it sounded to you like the voice of the original song, and and I, I imagine that that if as each of us do that, and as each of us sing and share our own gifts, our own that's ours to give, mm -hmm. that will resonate, mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that's the that's the way we can learn to listen well enough and feel our own self, and then share our own thing, and then listen, and then start to feel that this this um, magical togetherness we're in. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like if we're not aware of our own, we'll, we'll just call our own original song. If we if we frame it like that, or our own personal mythology of of what it is uh, that we're most uh, authentically to be to express, um, then we tend to adopt the stories and the songs of a of a culture around us. Um, then on our own, and and they're spun with a different value um, system that's in place. So these, um, these songs uh, going within, you know, the, the inward journey, I guess is, is what's important, that these songs can't be found um, outside of us. That the mm -hmm. things around us can activate the inward journey, as I was spoken in, the, in, my, in the beginning when, I, when it, uh, my father's death activated an inward journey that uh, was present, started to be present when I was around 14. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a, that inward journey and, and that quieting and, and the deeper listening uh, mm -hmm. where we begin to hear. Yeah. yeah. So, and your spirit, you may have noticed that spirit uh, gave, sent you a couple of ahos there in the middle of what you were saying there. So. I heard a little ding. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, have, uh, I, have a, I have a funny story to tell you about um, songs. Yeah. Uh, it came to me in a dream. Um, as I do a lot of, you know, again, do a lot of work with ritual and ceremony. So I had this dream. I don't believe I've ever shared this story. Uh, I had this dream that I was at this social function gathering as somewhat of a party. And um, I'm standing in this room and there's people moving around. and um, and all of a sudden, I noticed that items on this table are starting to move by themselves. And um, and I noticed that, and I'm watching people. They don't seem to be noticing. I'm thinking, something's not right here. Um, <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, there might be some spirits in the room. And mm -hmm. so I'm watching this. Um, and then I walk over to these this French glass door that opens up into this courtyard behind us. This, uh, yard and um, green area and as I, as I walk there I notice all of these uh, lost souls uh, begin to like they're walking towards the house um, and I think you know they, they need help so I take out my rattle and I start rattling and, and they begin to vanish which seems right something seems helpful about helping them in that way and then I start to turn to come in the house, and then all of a sudden I see this man, another one, um, this African American man shows up, and um, and it's like he's lost too. He's he's uh, deceased, but he's not home. When we talk about home, he hasn't transitioned to the realm of the ancestors. So I walk out there and I uh, bring out my rattle. And before I start to sing, I notice this dark energy that moves across the ground. It starts to swirl around me and I start to feel my breath like I'm losing my breath. Now, before the dream, I had been studying some about the what they call the Navajo singers. Often uh, ceremonies will be called singers. Um, 
but I'd be thinking about that context of song. And so as this energy started to swirl around me, um, and I started to feel my life energy getting like going away, and I felt a little bit of panic even in the dream. Um, I was aware of like the song. What's the song? And so the song that came to me was the Beatles song, All We Need Is Love. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so in the dream, I started singing, All We Need Is Love. <laughs> I started what? singing. Da, 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 da. And all of a sudden the energy went, and, and the man transitioned over the other side, and it's like, cleared it. <laughs> wow. so that, was, uh, oh, that was easy. <laughs> That was uh, maybe there's I can hear the deeper truth in that Beatles song really? <laughs> that came to me wow. in that dream is like a healing song. It's like, well, I get, you know, that's probably it. That's that's the answer right there. <laughs> well, you know, it's just fascinating how the mind can interpret these things in one way and the heart interprets them, you know, it sees them differently. And the and, yeah. and soulfulness and deep soulfulness, you know, it's, um, you know, my my interpretation of Jesus's life was that Jesus was love incarnate and so whenever you remind vampires and things that want to suck the life out of you that it you know all you need is love then they go away <laughs> it was like you did your own little like holding up the cross to the vampire thing and it's like oh okay but that singing worked. singing the beatles is much more fun than holding up something that's so. right <laughs> i thought i was listening for some deeper song that was going to be right. minus the beatles song <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's something that somebody else brought in <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, 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 uh, we're we're running. We're I think we're about to the end of our time, but I wanted to give you an opportunity um, to um, share. You have a an offering to make, a little um, something that you'd like to to offer folks, and I'd like to for them to to hear about that and and uh, for you to get to share it. Uh, thank you. So yeah, it's um, part of this. If you if you sign up to the um, to our um, newsletter um at the, at the website rights of passage council.org um you will get uh, i will send you a, a audio story uh of called singing stone uh, you know this story is it just a good story for this particular summit mm -hmm. um and then you're and so everybody will get that the audio story of singing stone and then also your name will be entered into a drawing um, for a personal divination um, that will connect this way, depending on where you are on the planet. Um, of course, if you're local, you're welcome to come in person. Um, so those are the offerings that I wanted to, to offer out to folks. That's great. Um, and I, and I'll, I will, um, you know, Singing Stone is such a powerful and beautiful story. I, I've probably heard it. Oh, my God. How many times have I heard that story now? Um, <laughs> Thousand. You know, more many times as I told it. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 uh you know probably in the you know somewhere between 100 and 200 times, and every time I it never fails to you know like you say a story is a living thing, mm -hmm. and so it's never the same twice, and it's and it always lands differently you know depending on what you're paying attention to in any given moment. And it's just such a beautiful, a beautiful story. So uh, you know it's definitely worth. Um, um, uh, hearing that, and also I'll just say that I've had um, two, two or three divin divinate. I've had two that I'm that are that are really in me. I think one maybe years ago that's kind of kind of lost its um, energy in me. But uh, but the the last two, and particularly the last one, live in me every day. Um, and it's been a year and a half since mm -hmm. that that last one. And uh, and it still lives it lives in me every day, and I'm still working the assignment that you gave me a year and a half ago, uh, and uh, and it's a big. It has made a huge difference in my life. Just the process of working that um, that divination. So um, you know, if you have a chance to get a divination with Cater, um, it it's literally life changing and uh, in a good way. So um, uh, thank you, Cater, for this this uh, this fun chat. It was yeah, great thank to, you, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. And I would. Um, so I'll leave you with a, a ritual that folks can just do on their own, uh, which would be to go to some place in nature where you have, uh, say, if, even a few hours of time. Um, and before you step into nature, set the intention um, that your intention is to uh, look for or track or find your song. 
um, and in some ceremonial way mark the beginning of that walk and step into nature and then let yourself just be intuitively guided with the thought I'm, I'm looking for my song um, and just notice where you go maybe you come back with a, a particular item from nature a stone or something that has certain etchings on it that speaks to you deeply or maybe you find the spot in nature you sit beside a, a river or a stream or a tree um, that speaks to you but just let set the intention uh, to track the footprints and heartbeats of your song in nature and just let yourself have again a at least a two or three hour amount of time to do that and then come back with something maybe you come back with a physical object or you come back with a story um, and then share that with someone how, uh, uh, how that relates to your song mm. um, and it's like what I call breadcrumbs on the trail mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what a what a wonderful way to embark on that journey of finding your song is to mm -hmm. mark it with that with that ritual yeah, yeah. thank you for that thank you for You're that quite welcome. yeah all right Good, Peter. thank you so much brother Thank you, Daniel. It's been great being here. It's been absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing what emerges from here. We don't know. Yes, y'all. Thank you for all the good work you're doing out there. Mm -hmm. Well, my friend. All right. Be well. <laughs>